Hey everybody, this is Michael Vincent. This is John Mann. We're at John Mann's Guitar Vault. And today's a special day for me, um, and I guess our whole team, because uh, basically be because of the contents in this box is how I got into the guitar business and met Paul Smith. So let's open this up. So this box uh, arrived from uh, a friend of my cousin's named Terry. Terry Harrelson. And... Come on. Oh boy, there's a guitar in here. That's an old case. What is it? What is it? I'm gonna open it this way first because I So did you talk to this guy? Yeah, so so here's the deal. This guitar is the reason I met Paul Smith. I know the story, but if if you don't know the story. Alright, so lots of times people say to me, How do I meet Paul Smith? And uh Well, this guitar <laughs> Wow. <laughs> hmm. How long has it been since you've seen this? Late seventies. Probably seventy nine. Yeah, it's and it's around now. This is it. This is it. I'll tell you why in a bit. This is the guitar. 1975, I got married to my first wife. My cousin gave me this as a wedding present. My first wife was like, what the hell's wrong with your cousin? Who would give someone a guitar for a wedding present? Yeah. We my cousin. We can't, oh. we can't make dinner in it. Right. Oh, by the way, my cousin's name is Greg Mann. He's my older cousin. He, uh... It's in tune? It, they're crazy, isn't it? So, he gives me this guitar as a wedding present. It was a used guitar back then. It wasn't a vintage guitar. There were no vintage guitars in was 19... Six or seven years old? In 1975, yeah. This, is a, this was a 66. This had P90s in it. These pickups have been changed, oh, as well as the bridge. Okay. And who knows what else, but we'll find out. Tuners, huh, shallow tuners, that's, that's Paul. Paul did that. So, my cousin gives me this guitar. It's kind of beat to death. I restore it. So he gives you a guitar for your wedding and it's not even a new nice guitar. Right, but that's, <laughs> we were, I was 21, so that meant he was 22. He was probably still in college or just got out of college. He didn't have any money. Sure. And, uh, yeah. So, uh, I moved to Maryland out of New York and Along that line, I decided I could refinish this. I wanted it to look like it came from the Gibson factory. Well, after my third attempt, I had to concede that I really didn't know what I was doing when it came to refinishing guitars. I know a lot more now, but then I did not know. I think I may have used uh, Minwax stain from the hardware store and probably Fabulon or something, you know? <laughs> I can see that. So, uh, but anyway, I call up my cousin and I said, uh, do you know anyone that could do this? And he's like, oh yeah, you gotta meet Paul Smith. And he's right in Annapolis. And I was working in Annapolis at West. So Paul, Paul had like a store? No, he had this tiny little attic room in on the main street of Annapolis. And uh, it's called West Street. Okay. And it's colonial. I mean, all those buildings are from colonial times. So three flights up is Paul's little store. I mean, it's, Paul's a tall guy. And it, it was one of those places that the, you know, Ceiling, yeah. the roof line was like that. He was literally in the attic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It was hotter than hell up there in the summertime. <laughs> um, so I, I, we go up, I take the guitar with me and he says, yeah, I can refinish it. And uh, I think he said, I, I'm kind of recollecting, but I think he said, oh, $125.
And well, money. Yeah, but I was. It was affordable for me. Yeah. And heck, it, it had already been sanded down again. You know, there's no serial number on it because I sanded it all off. <laughs> so, so I give the guitar to Paul. I come back a month later. He says it's all ready, and uh, he asked me what I did for for work, just in conversation. And I, I was a, uh, an engineering tech at Westinghouse, which is an R and D place for the Navy. Was they're no longer there, but they were right in Annapolis as well. And I did look. It looked like it came, well, it's this color, this is the finish, but this is 50 years of playing, it looks like. It looked like factory new. Wow. With the exception of the binding. The binding was stained cherry red. Really? Why, why, would, yeah. you, why would you do that? Oh, look at that. Look at that. So. That's how you know it's the one, huh? Yeah, because there's no serial number. So if a guy does that, you know, a lot of times they'll just scrape that binding clean. But he, I don't know, he just didn't do it. Can you hold that up so they can? So, so that's the side. So what the guy that had it in the meantime must have did it. Right? Either did it or it wore off. Okay. But you could see the binding on this side is still there. So this is the original guitar. So <laughs> that's like nuts. And how? So, okay, so, fact, so, so you got the guitar to Paul, you met Paul, you guys started talking maybe about you helping him build some stuff? Well, he started talking about he was building a guitar for Carlos Santana, oh. and he had promised Santana a trim that wouldn't go out of tune, and he had lots of ideas of why the fenders, the fenders and all that stuff didn't work right, uh, but didn't have anyone who could make it and needed help with coming up with some of the other things to make it do what he wanted it to do. So I was the right guy at the right time at the right place. Just, you know, I, I understood what he taught, was talking about in the guitar language, and I could translate that into, you know, the manufacturing, engineering, machining. So here we are, 40, so, so how did you, how did the guitar go away from you? When's the last time you remember it? Why, why did it, so you my, don't have it anymore? Again, my cousin Greg, Greg always seemed to have, be, Trading guitars, getting buying, trading, selling guitars. Okay. Greg had a a 1961 Gibson ES355, also cherry red. For it, those of you who don't know, 335 is his favorite guitar. So yeah. That was the right body shape. This was a 355. <laughs> uh, had the baritone in it. Had the vibrola, you know, the long thing. Yeah, that, yeah. That did that? Looks like this thing might have had. This had the, this had a vibro. Uh, a, uh, the Vibrola on it, which was the bench sheet metal one. When you... Everyone took those off. That's those three... So you three traded three. it off? Yeah, so I traded it for the 355. When he wanted me to do the, the design work and the machining work for him for the bridge, Paul had no money. Uh -huh. He was broke. Paul still thought he was going to be a rock and roll star. And... Uh, I think he is. He made it. Be a rock and roll star. <laughs> he doesn't have any number one hits, uh -huh. <laughs> but uh, but so he's made the tools that made a lot. That's how that's how I came to get that guitar, which by the way is back there on the wall. And we do have another YouTube video of John and Paul talking about that guitar, so check it out on our channel. Yeah, but uh, yeah, but back to this. So yeah, so he built me that guitar to pay me for the work that I was doing. Okay. So, uh, yeah. So this guitar left my possession probably, probably 78, 79. You know, I was, it was a step up to go from this to a 355 in my opinion. Yeah. And uh, I never really thought much about this guitar. I know we've talked about it. Yeah. I met John when I was 13 and I've been hearing stories about the PRS in the beginnings and you always want to know, how did you meet Paul? And you, and this guitar always comes up in conversation, like, oh, it was that guitar. Well, what happened to it? I, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, that's too long ago. Yeah. One day we were talking on the phone and I said, hey, do you remember whatever happened to that guitar? And he's like, oh yeah, my buddy Terry's got it. I'm like, <laughs> you know where the guitar is? And he's like, yeah, still it's, it. it's yeah. in Maryland. It's right here in Maryland. He says, Terry's still got it. I know he plays it. And I'm like, oh my God. I said, call Terry up and ask him if he'll sell me the guitar. I mean, how cool would that be to have 
the reason why I met Paul, that, that's full circle. That's like the, the beginning of our history together. Paul doesn't even know that this, this is here at this point. He called Terry up and Terry's like, I'm not ready to let it go. But when I am, I'll keep you in mind. So I, it was kind of like, well, out of sight, out of mind. I really didn't think, I really didn't think I'd ever get it back. So how did it get here? Well, a couple weeks ago, I got an email and it's from Terry. And he says, um, I'm cleaning house and it's time to let go of this guitar. It's your guitar. So I want to give it to you. It belongs to you. You yeah. should you should have it back. So you were saying that Greg, like they traded a lot of stuff. You think he even paid for it way back? I maybe who knows? Maybe traded maybe something. Maybe just traded something. Who knows? And I right away called him up. I'm like Terry, you're amazing. Thank you. Thank you. You know. <laughs> but is this the original case? Yeah. Yeah. I think so. Wow. It looks like it is. Yeah. Let's get that. It's the SG. Let's get that classic. Old Gibson yellow. Yeah, so um, I'm like, Terry, let me pay you for it or, you know, get you another guitar. You know, what, what do you want? And he's like, nope. He's cleaning the house. It belongs to you. And I'm like, I just like, I couldn't believe it. So when it, for this to show up today and, and, and have this, it's like, I can't tell you what this means. You know, this is like. Do you remember like liking it? Did you have multiple guitars back then or? No, this was my only electric at that time. Really? I was, you know, like most people I had an acoustic and electric. So, so yeah, this is, uh, this is amazing. That's pretty cool. The, the well, few hairs that I have that are on his arm are standing <laughs> up. <laughs> Yeah. I hear noise. Those aren't the original pickups. No, they're not. Sounds good. Controls work. Does it make you feel younger? <laughs> Just sitting next to you makes me feel uh, younger. Okay. <laughs> Typical slim taper neck. Not my favorite, but it's what you could afford, right? That was it. I like wow. Well, actually, you got it as a present, so <laughs> yeah. Even better. So this guitar didn't know me anyway. No. Well that's awesome. That's awesome. Well, there you go. I would like to, I think right now in my brain, I'd like to put it back to the way it was when I had it. Okay. Meaning put P90s back in it. Yeah. Um, well, hey. Maybe we'll put, you know, if, well, we, if we know somebody that, you know, can make us a bridge. Yeah, I, I think maybe we could do a, we could do a man-made uh, 2310, which is a Gibson version wraparound that would fit on that and sound good. And we'll have to check out the electronics. Who knows what he did? You know, the tuners, yeah. I guess we just leave because yeah. it's done. But... It still works though. So we'll have to do a video of that, of the progress of it. And then, uh, I have to take it down to my old friend and uh, oh, man. see what he thinks about it. That's crazy. Th this is crazy. That is crazy. <laughs> I, I'm like, wow. And you know what? This to me is of more value than the hundred thousand dollar one, given what it represents and what it is. Yeah. Yeah, I can see that. That's so, that's just. I crazy. mean, if you want to trade it, I've got some. Uh... Get some strats if you want. <laughs> Thanks to my cousin Greg and especially to, to Terry Harrison who Who kept it all these years. He didn't sell it on eBay and yeah. you know it's But he was so generous to, to give that to me. Yeah, I, it's, it's like it's, I can't believe it. It's a big deal. That that is like a true person, a true wonderful human being. So Terry I guess runs an open mic jam somewhere in the uh, Bethesda area. And I promised him when this is all back to the way it was that uh, he and uh, and I and Greg and Roxanne will have to go to 
we'll go down to his gym and we'll have to jam together. Maybe uh, that would be fun. Maybe we can get a certain Smith fella. Maybe Paul. To come out. Maybe you. Maybe maybe we'll maybe we'll film something. I I see a road trip and I yeah yeah. <laughs> All because of this guitar. Yeah.